This time last year, I was growing in a small urban front yard. The big event of 2020 that I think we all know had not happened yet. And really a lot of things in my personal life changed dramatically year over year. So in this video, what I want to do is show you the new property here, the Epic Homestead, and show you the progress that I've made over the last four or so months since I moved in here. Honestly, a little bit less progress than I would have wanted, but I think given the way that 2020 went, that's completely forgivable. Although I will say in the world of gardening, it was kind of a bad year for a lot of different sectors of the world, personal lives of many people. In the world of gardening, it's one of the best years that we've ever seen. It's certainly I've ever seen in my decade plus long years of growing. So I'm very grateful at least for that. And in that spirit, I do wanna show you some of what's been going on here. And what I'll do in this video is show you a little bit of what it used to look like and what it looks like now. So without further ado, cultivate that like button for an epic 2021 homestead tour. Let's get into it. One of the things I am most pleased about is bringing the original Epic Garden to life in an improved way here at the Epic Homestead. So I still have my classic raised beds. These are the birdies raised beds that I know and love and actually distribute here in America. So if you'd like to cop some, then go ahead and check out the link in the description. But I went with taller ones here. You could do this out of wood as well. The problem is wood is just extremely expensive right now. It's actually more expensive than metal. So for something that lasts longer for me, metal wins that battle, at least for right now. But I went with taller ones, 30 inches tall. I used my method in the video I did on how to fill a tall raised bed and save 60% on your soil. So a lot of logs and some chips down in the bottom, some grass trimmings and stuff, and then some high quality soil up here. I've gone with straw mulch on top of every single one of my raised beds, just a shredded straw. The trick with straw is you wanna go with straw, not hay. Hay generally contains a little bit more weed seeds and you wanna make sure you're getting a straw that didn't have any sort of herbicide, fungicide, etc., used on it. Cause that really can, especially an herbicide, hamper your plants. But some other changes that went on in this front yard raised bed garden compared to the old one at my old original urban garden is that there's a lot more space in between the beds. So typically you want maybe 24 to 30 inches of space. I would say about 30 inches bed to bed because you want to be able to get a wheelbarrow through. You want to be able to get yourself through. In my old garden, I had about 10 inches of space in between because I was just cramming things in wherever I could manage. And that was fine for the time being, but I got to say having this space here has really, really improved my overall daily experience of gardening. And I'm just mixing in as many different methods as I possibly can. You can see from our loofah video, I still have one more loofah hanging on the vine. This front yard garden really is sort of an homage to the original and also a way to show you guys how to grow in as many different ways as possible, no matter where you live, no matter what type of living situation that you're in. Over here, we're hanging out underneath my loquat tree, which again, it's kind of a funny little omen, I suppose, to have a loquat tree, which is the only fruit tree I had at the old place. The orchard is roughly where we're sitting right now. I've picked out about 40 to 50 different trees, bushes, and vines that I'm gonna be growing in this section. So I will release a full video on every single one of those if you guys want to know exactly what I'm doing. And by the way, if there's any section of this tour that you wanna see more about a dedicated video, please drop it in the comments and then everyone else like the ones that you wanna see the most so I know which videos you really, really wanna see. But this section right here is going to be a functional backyard orchard, although it will be in the front yard. But when I say backyard orchard, what I mean is I'm going to be using the Dave Wilson backyard orchard culture method where you actually don't grow your fruit trees that tall. You will summer prune them down to no more than about eight feet or so, and you'll actually plant them much more close together than you normally would. So let's just take something like a peach, which is one of my favorite fruits. For peaches, instead of growing one massive peach tree, which let's just say it comes to fruit in April, then you're gonna have all your fruit in April and that's it. Instead, what someone like Dave Wilson would do is they would pick four different varieties that come to fruit at a little bit offset times. So let's just say May, April, June, August, something like that and you keep them all a lot smaller and you plant them close together. So in a sense, you're almost growing one tree that's grafted four ways, although technically it's not true because they're actually four separate trees. So that's gonna be the method I'm using because I wanna cram as many different trees, bushes and berries and vines in as humanly possible while still having ample production. And I don't need a ton of one particular fruit. I wanna come out, graze in my little Garden of Eden here, Garden of Kevin, I suppose, and uh, just snack on what I wanna snack on. I don't need 600 peach in a day. I need five peach 
every week for like five months at a time. So that's what's going on here in the orchard, which of course doesn't look like anything yet because I don't have the trees. So here we are at the no dig bed, which I made just a couple weeks back in collaboration with Charles Dowding. And as I mentioned in that video, this was my very first no dig bed and there certainly were some mistakes that I made or some adjustments that I might make going forward, which I will do to remedy some of the potential performance issues I'm seeing growing in this bed. The first one being that the soil, this compost mixture rather, seems to stay way more moist than I want it to be. And so I think I need to adjust the mixture slightly because the, the plants are growing, but they're growing a little bit slower than I would want. We've also had some unseasonably cold temperatures for San Diego and actually more rain than we would have expected. And so that could be a factor here. I'm not 100% sure, but a couple other changes I might make in this bed is I'm going to add just overall more soil mixture to it. I'm gonna lighten that soil mixture up just slightly, and then I'm going to bring out that cardboard mulch that you guys saw me lay down in that video just maybe about six to 12 inches out because I don't want that Bermuda grass to come up and over. So certainly some adjustments to make, but again, just another way to grow food that's probably one of the cheaper methods. You don't have to build a bed. You don't have to buy a bed. You don't need a ton of soil. You need something to initially plant it in unless you have perfect soil. And if that's the case, I absolutely envy you. But the no dig bed, some adjustments to be made, but I'll be doing another update later in the spring. So here we are as we almost get our way into the backyard, which actually there's quite a lot going on, which I can't wait to show you, but we have this incredible moon arbor that has yet to have something growing up of it. I actually did a little bit of peas earlier on in the fall. They did okay. I wanted to end up moving this arbor to right here. So I relocated them and that was a whole snafu, but we're growing roses for the very first time, guys. I've got these incredible roses that a friend of mine dropped off. They are climbing roses. They're yellowish orange, and I'm gonna have them slowly come up and over. So hopefully in the future, we'll have this beautiful brick laid path coming through here. And then what I'm gonna have is, I'm gonna just have these beautiful, beautiful climbing roses, first time growing roses, all of you have wanted me to grow flowers for a long, long time. I just sort of put it off, I suppose. I wanted to grow an edible flower. I wanted to grow like, you know, a calendula or a pollinator flower. And now I'm just growing straight up climbing roses and I could not be more excited. So stay tuned for that. There'll be many videos about it. One thing that's always been hard for me to grow in my old gardens are these larger perennials because for the most part, if I was to grow what you see in front of me right here, artichoke, it would have taken up maybe, I don't know, a sixth or a seventh of my entire garden. We're talking about things like rhubarb, artichoke, uh, these larger bush style plants. And so that's what I've planted right here. I've got artichoke lining this entire row here. I've also planted some rhubarb behind it. Rhubarb typically, you know, you see it a lot in an English garden. All of my UK garden friends on Instagram, they grow these massive stalks of rhubarb. It really wants a colder winter than we typically have here in San Diego. I'm still gonna experiment with it. I mean, I think something that people forget about gardening is the goal is not to have every single plant live and thrive perfectly. The goal is actually for you to understand a lot more about how plants work. And there's no better way to do that than pushing your zone and pushing your limits and testing things out. So I put rhubarb in. I know the artichoke's gonna do well. This is a green globe artichoke. It's gonna be a perennial for at least about two, three years or so, and it's gonna explode. It's gonna look amazing. But the rhubarb behind, we'll see how it goes. This is sort of my little perennial test bed. You know it wouldn't be an epic gardening video if I didn't talk about dragon fruit in some way or another. So here we have Dragon Fruit Alley. It's a slow growing plant. It's coming along quite nicely though. So I have six different varieties. I have four of each planted in each of these pots. These are 25 gallon huge terracotta pots I got for about 40 bucks each. So really quite a steal in my opinion. And then I have my Dragon Fruit trellises that I built for a video a little bit earlier on in the year. So four vari six varieties, four each. They're gonna climb up. You can see some of them are already starting to go. I'm really excited. I mean, these are going to be, these are some of the rarer ones that you'll ever see. There's some that honestly, I might be one of the only three people on earth to have some of these varieties, but nevertheless, I will be doing a lot more dragon fruit care videos coming up. Okay, welcome to the backyard. We're sitting on my massive mulch pile. A while back, a new neighbor moved in and that was actually great. He's really into gardening. It's really cool to have a neighbor that's kind of like-minded. At the same time, there was a bunch of trees on the property line. Brazilian red pepper and Chinese elm that wanted to come down. He wanted to take them down. Honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal because they're, first of all, the Brazilian red pepper is an invasive tree and it's quite gnarly as far as the roots go. They're very close to our foundations. So he chopped them down and, you know, trees going down, always kind of a sad thing, but I hit up the arborists and I'm now sitting on all of those trees. So I had them literally chip it directly into my yard. I used the logs to fill up the raised beds. Uh, this chipped mulch, you're gonna start to see, it's been strewn about the entire property. But as we sit here in the backyard over here, there's some cool stuff. Over here, it's a complete empty wasteland of weeds. At some point, I'd like to turn into a 
classic row style market garden and maybe even hire someone here at the Epic Gardening team to help run that so that we can show you all how you can, if you want to, actually make a living growing plants directly by selling the plants to farmers markets, local restaurants, maybe starting a CSA of some kind. That's probably a little bit of ways in the future. Right now, I've got some other projects over here I wanna show you. So here we are in the true backyard garden, which I call the smorgasbord garden or the nonsensical garden because there's just so many different things going on here. You can see just plants strewn about me. This is the life of an epic gardener, I suppose. I've got some night blooming cereus here sent in by a epic gardening subscriber. We've got epiphyllum right here. That's a beautiful one, produces a massive white flower akin to a dragon fruit, but doesn't produce the fruit. And then you've got some dragon fruit cuttings. I've got peas here that are probably ready to go on the ground by now. And we've also got pineapple. I have about seven or eight different pineapple that I propagated off of my original pineapple video. But behind me is actually where I think the real interesting stuff is going down. Behind me, there's a ton of mess, so please forgive that. I really like showing you a work in progress. I'm actually not really a fan of these very beautiful scenes that people will post on YouTube or Instagram. I'd much rather show you the reality of how a garden gets built from scratch, how you develop a property from scratch, this is how it actually happens. It's not like the pretty stuff you see at the end. So what we have here are some potatoes. So behind me in this beautiful looking little mini plot here are my Ruth Stout, modified Ruth Stout potato growing method. So many of you know from my survival challenge I did back in 2019, I grew about 100 pounds of potatoes. I tested out a bunch of different methods, five gallon buckets, grow bags, in the ground with hilling, in the ground without hilling. And surprisingly, what won out as far as yield plus overall effort was in the ground no hilling which is a somewhat ruth stout method you guys need to look up the ruth stout no work garden it's a classic classic book but what i've done here is i've got six different varieties i've got just some simple straw on top i took a mattock i pulled out maybe six inches of soil or so i have relatively heavy clay here and just popped in the potatoes they were already sprouting brushed the soil over covered them up i watered them in I'm probably not even gonna water them too much until I start seeing some green shoots come out of the ground. Potatoes are a, sort of a pioneer crop. They don't really need heavily improved soil to do well. They can actually push their way through clay a decent amount. I wouldn't say they're like super stellar at that, but they do okay with it. And these are gonna be just fine. I've got 36 different total potatoes, six different varieties. I should be getting roughly 100 plus pounds of potatoes if I do even just a mediocre job in this. And this is just, unimproved ground. So over here, this is my sheet mulch area that's gonna be my garlic, but my garlic is still in the fridge. I'm vernalizing my garlic. It's gonna take about three months or so because I really wanna give hardneck garlic a shot here in a warm climate like San Diego. But to do that, at least from all my research, I need to do as good a job as I can at faking the winter, which is vernalizing the garlic. So instead of keeping it in the fridge for about four weeks, I'm gonna keep it in the fridge for about 10 or 12 weeks. So that means I'm gonna plant it out probably in a couple weeks or so. And hopefully we have better luck here on this property without the skunks digging up the garlic without the grubs in the ground who knows there'll probably be some other problem but we'll see over here we have probably the most famous crop of all time at least here on the epic gardening channel which is the ginger i planted last year for the how to grow ginger in your containers video that just absolutely exploded both the plant itself and the video did really well so i hope a lot of you are growing ginger right now or harvested ginger in december or so but these little containers here i've just got ginger i've got sugar cane crop i've never grown hanging out right in that corner over there uh, this is a very simple way to grow peas you guys so this is just peas i've got six of them in this little container one bamboo steak per pea they have these little tendrils, as you might know, and they'll start climbing up and boom, you have like a little wall of peas here. And then behind me, I have some pineapples planted, but the real magic is what's going on over here. So I know a lot of you know that I love those birdies beds. Of course, I sell them here in America. I love them. They're my favorite bed of all time, but I do have a more classic styled bed, this red cedar bed. It's four foot by eight foot. And this is going to be my tea garden, my herbal remedies garden, my medicinal garden, if you will. So I have a lot to learn in that area of gardening. It might even be a little bit of a spice garden too. I just got a book on how to grow your own spices. I'm very stoked about that. But that's what's going on there. Nice, flat, huge amount of space for some sprawling herbs and spices. Okay, before we get to the final, final part, I wanna show you what this property looks like from above. So we're up on the roof and take a look at that sunset, guys. Come on now. Not bad for January 6th. Alrighty, so there's our front yard garden. We've got some soil hanging out in the driveway as a true gardener would have, I suppose. 
And yeah, just a lot of different methods down there. Of course, we have the future site of the orchard. We're gonna be replacing that fence over there. The loquat tree right there is really the only sizable thing. And this little pathetic lemon over here. We might bring that back to life. We might end up replacing it with something else. We'll see. But I wanna show you the back, but look at that. We got solar on the roof, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second, but I do wanna show you the back. Okay, so there's the shed. You guys all know the shed. There's the wasteland, ignore that please. Actually, this is cardboard. This is very useful for a gardener. You wanna keep that as much as you can. As you can see, I've been using it as my little sheet mulch. So very useful, doesn't look that great. I should probably put it in a different location, but here's the evolution or the beginning of our, our backyard plot that needs a lot of borders and needs a lot of border plantings. I'm gonna put some nasturtiums in there and such, but there we go. This is the, the property quite a bit to tame. One of the things that I really wanna do here at the Epic Homestead is not only showcase how to grow your own food as much of it as possible, as easily as possible, in as many different methods as possible, but also how to do so in a way that is in harmony, I suppose, with the rest of how you, I believe, at least, a good life should be lived, and that would be to be as sustainable as possible. You know, don't go overboard and, and just try to almost kill yourself in order to be extremely sustainable, but if things make sense, just do them, right? Solar in my area makes a lot of sense. So solar's now on the roof. We're sitting on a new roof right now, so some of these projects just really were quite a bear to get done, but they got done. New roof, new solar. The solar is going to be turned on pretty soon. It'll be powering a lot of the garden out there. And I just want to take this time to say, first of all, thanks for sticking with me as I've been a little quiet here on YouTube. You know, the year was probably one of the best years of my entire life, honestly. Um, and I know that's not the case for many people out there. So I'm very, very grateful, first of all, for all of you watching these videos, for connecting with me. I've talked to probably I don't even know, 20,000 of you over the course of the year as far as comments replied to and, and DMs and emails and all sorts of things like that. So, you know, really, I cannot thank you enough. I'm standing on this building because of you guys. I have these solar panels because of you guys. Uh, I have a garden because of you guys. And really, honestly, I have like a purpose as far as what I want to do while I'm alive, probably because of you guys here on, on YouTube and, and elsewhere. And so, that's just really crazy to me. Um, when I look back at my early videos, you know, I've, I filmed them with a phone. Um, I, I look like a complete slob, I probably still do. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, it, it really is uh, mind boggling where Epic Gardening has, has come to. And, and honestly, the thing that, that is most important to me is all the emails that I get from you guys in the comments about how you've used the material that I've put out and changed your own life, which really is the ultimate reward. It's the most fulfilling thing, you know, having this cool solar panel, whatever, I could, I could earn that money in another way. Um, but these emails that I get are, are uh, truly very touching to me. Uh, and I save them all in a little folder. So when I have bad days, then I read them all and I feel good. So <laughs> anyways, I wanna say thank you. Here's to an amazing 2021. Drop me a line in the comments. Let me know what you wanna see more of this year. And until next time, you know it. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.